what we've noticed uh, typically, let's say over the last say 30, 40, 40 years or so, is that when you get the silver ratio, the gold silver ratio falling below 80, and then continuing to fall from that point, that sort of tends to be the indicator, the trigger point that you were going to, we are in a, in a ongoing sustained uh, rally cycle for silver. And at that point, silver uh, starts to do very well. It continues to outpace gains in gold. Both metals will do well. Silver will simply do better than gold and, and outpace its gains. Since dropping below 80 on May 13th, the gold-silver ratio, which measures the amount of silver ounces needed to buy a single ounce of gold, has dropped even further to its lowest since December 2022. The mint ratio is an important ratio often used by traders to determine the best time to buy or sell. Silver investors and experts are quite particular about this ratio, especially during moments like this, when the white metal begins to outstrip gold gains. According to renowned metals and resource stock analyst Peter Krauth, the mint ratio does more than indicate the relationship between gold and silver prices. It can also be a good indicator of what's to come. Krauth estimates that as long as the ratio stays below 80 and continues dropping, silver will record higher price gains and may even peak at $100 or more during this bull market. The 20-year veteran discussed his outlook and predictions for silver in a recent interview with Metals and Miners. During the interview, Krauth explained that silver has entered the second phase of an extended, generational bull market that started in the early 2000s. However, Unlike previous bull markets, Krauth believes silver prices will run higher in 2024 and the coming years due to the worsening supply and demand dynamics. The Silver Institute has reported silver deficits for three consecutive years since 2021 and estimates that the deficit will grow in 2024 and persist in the coming years. This is majorly due to the growing industrial demand for the white metal. Krauth's analysis and keen observation of the silver market over the past two to three years show that exchanges are being stripped of their silver inventories by ravenous industrial users who desperately need the metal and can't get it elsewhere. However, the inventories cannot last forever. In fact, Krauth believes the world is on the brink of a silver supply crisis that would lead to a mania phase during which silver prices will soar wildly. We will present clips from Krauth's interview but before we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell for more videos like this. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Here's the chart that I actually put together. It, uh, I, you know, I had this suspicion that industrial users were getting their silver somewhere. Um, one of the sources I suspected we can talk about that in a moment is um, is some of the futures markets. But silver ETFs hold a lot of physical silver. Um, you know, there's all kinds of debates about how much of that is really there. But we go on the assumption that it's there. Um, just looking at one silver ETF, the world's largest, SLV, it's $10 billion, has about 400 million ounces of silver. And this is the oldest silver ETF. It's existed since 2006. And so this chart shows you, if you look at the first two polygons, these are in green. And what they show at the bottom is that the first polygon shows that the amount of silver held by the ETF grew from about 2009, uh, 2008 to 2009. This was the global financial crisis, while the price of silver actually corrected pretty significantly. So that was interesting. Silver holdings grew within the ETF. Then you had this big price correction from 2011 till about 2013 in the silver price, and yet a small correction to start with. And over time, the silver holdings essentially moved sideways. They were flat. There was no big sell-off in the, in the silver holdings. Fast forward to 2021, and you have a side, essentially sideways moving silver price, but a peak in the silver holdings, which would have been early 2021, and then a gradual consistent sell-off up until today in SLV holdings of silver. So my view is that you have large industrial users are buying silver ETFs. So ones that are backed by silver, they're going to the uh, administrator and they're saying, I've got here, you know, X number millions of units of this ETF. I'd like the silver. 
here are my units. This is where I want it delivered. And so they're taking physical delivery of that silver. That's one way to access it. And you're essentially paying spot for it. And then I've got, I was also, you know, wondering about what was happening in the futures. So there are three, the three major ones being the COMEX, the LBMA and Shanghai. So this shows the COMEX. Well, mm -hmm. 400 million ounces back in early 2021, currently somewhere around 270 million ounces. Mm -hmm. So that explains over 100 million ounces of silver coming out of the COMEX going somewhere. Then you've got the LBMA. There's still, this, to be fair, includes some of the silver ETF uh, silver. In, the, in any case, about, say, 1.2-ish billion ounces, dropping down by about 400 million ounces currently mm -hmm. to just about 800 million ounces. And then you've got Shanghai, 3, three billion ounces, dropping down to about 1.5 billion ounces over the sp same time span. Interestingly, all, mm. all three futures exchanges, the silver ETFs, same drop. And so my impression is that you have large silver consumers, mostly industrial consumers, are mm. buying long futures contracts, waiting for them to expire, and then taking delivery. You have them buying the silver ETFs, turning in their their units in that etf for for physical silver so interestingly enough it, it it does to me and, and interest yeah. interestingly enough you know i i'm not an expert in this area but you you, you kind of piece this together there was a, a report by td bank that came out just about a week and a half or so ago two weeks ago and they had essentially the same conclusion and i just saw that report about uh, three four days ago and they're saying that and, and my estimate and it's nobody really knows for sure what above ground stocks are of silver but based on this this the pace of this trend unless it slows or reverses and i'd be interesting to see if it does or not but uh, you know it's easy to follow they felt as do i that we had about perhaps 12 to 24 months before these secondary i call them secondary inventories are are drawn down and completely uh, emptied what happens when these big consumers need more silver from the COMEX or LBMA and their orders cannot be fulfilled? There will be a loud public outcry that will finally force other investors into action. Krauth estimates that when that happens, central banks, big commercial banks, hedge funds and retail investors will all be scrambling for the few available supplies in a mad dash that will instantly cause silver prices to soar. Additionally, the crisis will be worsened by the general state of the markets and the global economy. Krauth adds that even if we don't get into a full mania phase, there are several other metrics that indicate silver prices will climb much higher before there is a major correction. One indicator the analyst is keenly following is a potential Fed rate cut and its impact on gold and silver prices. Let's get back to the interview. I've not seen this chart anywhere else. I decided I was going to go ahead and, and try and create it myself and see what the last few uh, bull cycles looked like in, in silver when the Fed cut rates. And um, it's very interesting that what you do get is you is is a, a run up in the silver price that starts later than gold's run up in that mm -hmm. uh, uh, rate cutting cycle. So it's typically about halfway down through that rate cutting cycle. We can you know we can see that in hindsight, um, and there's been some tremendous returns. I was surprised when I went and did and, and created the chart to see what it looked like. So. That first phase, that first uh, rate cutting cycle was back in sort of 2000, 2001. And then by about late 2001, silver really started to, to run. And by the time it had that first peak, it was up 487%. That's and amazing. It's tremendous. And then when we had this rate cutting cycle again that we had through the financial crisis, that started in, uh, say, uh, mid or so 2008, and then you had silver from forget what point it was at at that point, probably around maybe 15 or so dollars. It had a tremendous run. It had 500 percent gain um, right up until 2011. Fantastic run up. And then early in uh, 2020, when we had uh, this you know, very, very quick rate cutting cycle due to the COVID pandemic um, by central banks, 
And then you had silver again in a huge rally up 25%. So the average of those last three rallies that really only span about 24 years. So three big rally cycles, uh, the average is 413%. If you just had the average of four times, even from its current level, or even from $25, you'd be looking at $100 silver. That's amazing. It, it'd be tremendous. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's, I think a lot to look forward to. Uh, if you had $3,000 gold, a 60 to one, what are you looking at? $50 silver easily. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think that's, I think I've got that right. $3,000. Yeah, yeah, you do. And one. you're still elevated over the historical mean of, of gold to silver. Exactly. You're still elevated. You haven't had a, uh, I don't think that $3,000 gold will limit you to $50 silver. <laughs> right. You were talking earlier in, about how things move towards the mean and then overshoot. And that's absolutely what I would see happen. If you had $3,000 gold, you'd probably be looking at more like $70 or $80 silver. Several market analysts are predicting an imminent mania phase for silver. David Morgan of the Morgan Report predicts another more frenzied scramble for silver which he says will carry silver prices to highs that will repair all the excess paper money creation, price suppression, supply deficit, and bearish sentiment the market has had over the past two decades. He describes it as the great silver crisis. Krauth calls it a mania phase, and he believes it could begin in 12 to 18 months after the silver inventories are depleted. Please share your thoughts on these predictions by dropping your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check out our other videos on gold, silver, and other metals. Thanks for watching.